Lena was a devoted mother to her little son and baby daughter and didn't want to leave them alone with a nanny. But circumstances forced her to do otherwise, and she never imagined she'd return home one day to find bruises on her children. It was a bright Sunday morning, and Lena was sipping tea on her front porch while her husband Todd was working in the garage. With the pleasant weather and birds chirping merrily in the skies, everything seemed perfect with the outside world, but Lena's heart was anxious, possessing every other fear that a mother's heart could. Lena had taken a break from work after her first pregnancy and was supposed to return to her job now. She adored her children as any mother would, but she didn't want to let go of her brilliant career. When she discussed that with Todd, he suggested they hire a nanny. But Lena didn't want that. She knew their son, Jeremy, could be a handful at times, and May was so small and young. Lena's heart skipped a beat every time she considered leaving her children in the care of a stranger, a nanny. She was almost sure she would put her career on hold for the sake of her children. But one fateful day changed everything when they hired Bella, a young woman, as their children's nanny. Todd, the kids are very young and need me. I can give up the job, Lena had told Todd a week ago when they were discussing hiring a nanny. Come on, Lena, Todd had said. I know you love your job. I appreciate your concern for our children, but Jeremy is a big boy and doesn't need his mama all the time. He's four. And what about May? She's only two, hun. Leaving them with a nanny. I don't know if I'm ready for that. Look, Lena, I don't want you to be one of those women who give up their dreams for the sake of their husband and children. You'd get what I mean, right? Todd, I'm a mother now. I'm more than just a woman who, well, cares about her career. Even Lena knew how she was lying to herself when she said that. She had always been a very ambitious woman who wanted to do much more in life than just raising her children. She wanted to make a name for herself. But the kids arrived sooner than she and Todd had planned, and her motherly instincts wouldn't let her think about anything but the children. Besides, Jeremy and May were very mischievous, and she had to always be after them. Look, Lena, Todd had finally said, I can't force you to return to work, but I'd like you to reconsider. So many families hire nannies, and the person will not be a complete stranger, honestly. We'll have their ID and any other information we need. Being a mother is the most demanding job in the world that requires undivided attention. Lena thought it over for the next few days, and the idea didn't seem bad to her. Maybe Todd is right. The kids will be okay. I'm just overthinking. We'll hire someone trustworthy. So many people hire nannies. After contacting a few agencies and reviewing more than 30 profiles, Todd and Lena chose Bella's profile. She lived nearby, and they thought they could call her on short notice if such a situation arrived. Bella visited Lena and Todd's house one Saturday morning. She was a brunette with beautiful blue eyes and a strange, charming smile, which made Lena uncomfortable. But she brushed it off as a product of her overthinking brain. Wonderful home, Bella said, extending her hand to Lena and then to Todd. It's a pleasure to work for you, Mr. and Mrs. Woods. Nice to meet you, Bella, Lena said, forcing a smile. Would you like to meet the kids? Oh, that's why I'm here, she grinned. You have twin daughters, right? Lena and Todd fell silent. A girl and a boy, Lena said finally. Two kids, yes, but a son and a daughter. Oh, how silly of me. I thought you had twin daughters, Bella exclaimed. I went to too many houses in the past few days and got confused. Oh, well, uh, we think it's okay, Todd laughed, easing the tension in the room. They're up there. Please follow me. Lena stood there watching as Bella and Todd went upstairs to the kids. What kind of a nanny is she? How can you get mixed up with that kind of information? Can I trust her enough? I don't think this is right. I don't think she is right. Lena's heart shuddered when she left for work on Monday, leaving the kids all alone with Bella. Have a wonderful day, Mommy. Bella waved goodbye from the front porch, May in her arms and Jeremy standing beside her. Have a great day, Bella. See you soon, kids. Don't trouble Bella too much, all right? She said before she settled in her car and drove away. On the way to her office and even at work, Lena couldn't take her children off her mind. Is Bella taking good care of them? What if she forgets about Jim Reed's meds? 
She didn't even remember I had a son and daughter, not twin daughters. Lena's heart wouldn't stop racing until she knew her children were safe, so she called Bella every 15 minutes to see if they were okay. Jeremy is allergic to dust, Bella? Lena explained over the phone. Please don't take him to the playground, no matter how much he begs and cries. I'm sure it'll do something like that. Don't worry, Mrs. Woods, it's all fine here. Jeremy and May are the loveliest children I've ever babysat. They are great kids, and everything is perfect. Great kids, thought Bella as she hung up the phone. My children love troubling me. Jeremy is so hyperactive that I thought he had a problem. Is she lying? Is Bella faking it and not looking after my kids? I told Todd this was a terrible idea. A week passed. Lena could never fully trust Bella, but the kids were okay whenever she returned home. It seemed like Bella was a good nanny despite her silly memory problems and excessive praise for the children that Linda found hard to digest. Was a storm about to arrive soon? One day, Lena came home from work and went straight to see the children. She saw they were playing with their toys. Kids, mommy's home, she said, hugging them. That's when Linda noticed the bruise on Jemmery's knee. What happened to you, hun? How did you get that? She asked worriedly, looking at the bruise. Mommy, I? Are you okay, May? Lena's panic and worried eyes checked May, and she noticed bruises on May's elbow. What happened, Jeremy? Did Bella do this? Did she hurt you and your size stare? No, Mommy, no, no, Jeremy stammered. We, we fell. Mommy, yes, we fell while playing. Bella didn't hurt us. Something inside Lena's heart told her Jeremy was lying. Was Bella forcing the kids to lie? That night, Lena told Todd she wanted to fire Bella. I don't want her near my kids. Lena fumed. She's hurting our children, Todd. I saw bruises on Jeremy's knee, and she also hurt May. There is sometimes more to things than the eyes can see. What nonsense, cried Todd. How dare she touch our children? Well. Jemory claims he and Bella tripped while playing. Can you believe that? They're covering for her. Todd fell silent, his arms crossed across his chest. What? asked Lena. Aren't you angry? She's forcing our children to lie. Stop overthinking, honey, said Todd. They could have been playing when they fell. You're casting unnecessary doubt on her. Are you serious, Todd? You believe her, but not what I'm saying. Why would the kids cover for her? asked Todd. Just why? Maybe she forced them. Maybe she threatened them. Lena was adamant that Bella was harming their children, but Todd didn't believe her. So what Lena did the next day was install CCTVs all over the house without telling anyone. Todd had left for his office early, and the children were asleep then. Lena asked Bella to come over later that day and got the cameras installed. After all, she couldn't just let Bella hurt her children. I will expose that woman. How dare she hurt my babies? Todd will regret doing this. How could he not believe me? Once Bella was there, Lena told her to look after the children, settled in her car, and went off to work. At her office, she switched on the camera footage on her iPad and began watching it. She saw Bella playing with the kids and helping them with coloring. Nothing out of the ordinary yet. Lena kept watching the footage and around 4 p.m., she noticed Bella taking the kids upstairs to her and Todd's bedroom. What is she even doing? Lena's hand went to her mouth in shock as she watched the footage further. Jesus, is that what she's been up to behind my back? Lena couldn't believe her eyes. She rushed home after informing her boss of a family emergency. When she arrived, she ran upstairs to her bedroom and started crying. I'm so sorry, kids, she sobbed. I'm sorry. Mrs. Woods, you're early today, said Bella. Oh no, we, we didn't want you to know. It turned out Bella was a dance teacher in the past and was teaching the kids to dance so they could surprise Lena on her birthday, which was only a week away. The kids had stumbled and fallen while dancing, hence the bruises. Bella had to take the children to Todd and Lena's bedroom because the music player was in their room and Bella, Todd, and even the kids were in the plan together. But thanks to Lena's super anxious brain, she ruined the surprise for herself. I'm sorry, Bella, Lena said. 
I suspected you. I shouldn't have. I installed cameras over the house because I thought you, you were hurting my children. I felt so embarrassed after watching the footage. I had to rush home. I was so stupid. I'm sorry. Mommy, this was a surprise. You ruined it, Jemery said sadly. Oh well, it's not completely ruined, laughed Bella. We can still surprise her kids. Let's not reveal our dance moves to Mamioki. Lena felt so embarrassed. She apologized to Bella again, who said she didn't mind any of it. If I were in your shoes, Mrs. Woods, she said, I'd be equally worried. Being a mother is quite a job, isn't it? Tell me about it, said Lena shyly. A week later, the kids finally showed their performance to Lena, who cried after watching it. The family and Bella ate lots of cake, two laughed and shed happy tears. And Lena realized she couldn't have found a better babysitter than Bella.